פרק שם בסנטה, אם יראו שלים יראו שלים יראו שלים. We are moving the town. We're telling the moving over landing. Oh, the quality of the sound is vital. The quality of the movement. Hey, movement has characteristics. The dynamics, we are hey. The ingredients, oh, the ingredients, oh, the ingredients. Ha ha. Of dance, oh yes. We bake a cake, we have butter, sugar, milk. peanut butter, chocolate, whatever you prefer. And so in the dance, we have high, low, short, tall, medium, small. Everything is just a pose. Just a massage. Slow. Continuous four sides of the room, 25 body parts. It's a movement sentence that never ends and only just keeps moving in a circle and changing. The level, six levels, oh yes. And it's staccato, completely different quality. Whoa. Yes, yes, yes. It's a stagnant. It is a... What's the word I'm looking for? Static. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Whereby a single patient job is... Hey, it is when we mix like a salad, the slow ha-ha, and the fast hit hey, together. Oh, yes. Exciting times that we are in. Oh my goodness, how many reasons do we have? Ooh, you show Hey, to rejoice. Oh yes, you know at Sukkot, also known as the Feast of Booths, the Feast of Tabernacles, we are especially commanded by God himself to rejoice. Now in Yeshua, God's salvation, we have the inheritance of joy and peace. And we should come boldly before the throne of God. And the word of God says, if our consciences don't condemn us. In other words, There is real guilt. We could be truly guilty of something. And we need to repent. Ha-ha. <laughs> Turn away from that sin. Oh, yes. Even all the way back to our generations, because we can be perpetuating the sins of our fathers. Oh, yes. And we need to cut that off with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Ooh. Yes. And so we need to come boldly before the throne with a clear conscience. There is real guilt. And then there's false guilt that the adversary, ha-ha, who works through man, would like to put on us, so we say, no, I don't accept that, ha-ha. And so I've been talking about how I have stepped out of the devil culture, so to speak. You know what? The Word of God says, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. We're not called to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the adversary. No, you know why? First of all, that's an ensnarement. We'll go around and around and around, and we'll never actually go higher with God. And if you, child of God, truly desire hey, to be formed, to talk into the image of Messiah, your focus on the enemy will never bring you there. God is digging deep. He's excavating. He wants us truly to face those things that hold us back, hey, from living a godly life. So therefore, we cannot get the healing and the freedom and the emotional growth, the maturity in our lives if we keep blaming the enemy. Cast him out. Oh, yeah. And this is my response. So what? So what? The enemy is real? So what? Next. See, when we stop being afraid, God will take care of him. Next. Moving on your way. Oh, yes. If you want to overcome, oh, yeah, you want to put the adversary under your feet, the enemy of your soul, your flesh, you want to put that sinful nature under your feet, you just submit to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee. You don't focus on him. And this is what I'm stepping on. Because I realize, ha, I will never be formed and shaped into the image of Messiah, Yeshua, God, salvation, cha-cha, if my eyes are continually round and round and round on the adversary. And this is so prevalent in the evangelistic community. Oh, my goodness. And God has shown me this. Oh, yes, yeah, so I have literally stepped out of it. Yes, and I have a new level of healing. And the other thing I want to share about, which I've been sharing about statically, not moving, is accepting ourselves in Elohim, because after all, Yeshua, God accepts us, ha, just the way we are. Of course, we're broken. He knows that He loves us in our brokenness, but He doesn't want that, 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 for us to say that way, oh no. So when we're with Him, we have the opportunity to get healed. And he does the healing. Ba, boo, ba, sha, sha, sha. 
but we can keep. We have to want to die. And if you don't want, ask God to help you to want. Ask God to help you to be willing to want what He wants for your life. Hey, pacha. Coming like a child, confounding the wisdom of this world. Oh, yes. Because Yeshua is fun. Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Yeshua that lives and breathes within us has a sense of humor. Oh, yeah. I'll never forget, I was at the sea, which is my favorite place to be, to get my head down to the ocean, in the ocean, huh? And I said, okay, God, I'm not coming out until you speak to me, right? And I heard the voice specifically. Yeshua said, can we just have fun? And he gave the Lord a riot. He's a riot, and he meant it. Can we just have fun and work here, huh? Because you left us. You need to be restored. You need to be revived. I love you to give you a wonderful time in me. I've given you the things that you love, photography, nature, flowers. I've placed this love in your heart to enjoy. The Word of God says He's given us everything for our enjoyment, yeah. Godly things. Oh yeah, but He's not a boring God. Far from it, oh no. We're the ones who are boring. False, pious, square, properly behaved, over-responsible adults now. It's not ha ha, cha 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 cha. This isn't what God wants for us. No, hey, really? No, He wants us to lift up our voice and chase the darkness out. Because trauma has lodged in our organs, bones, and nose, cartilage, muscles, joints, in our memory, even muscle memory, cellular memory. When we lift our voice, we put the adversary underneath us and behind us. Because what I have discovered. In every nation that I have worked with, oh yeah, almost every, almost every person, there's a fear of man. Fear of hearing your voice and humiliation is shame. There's a shame connected to, you know, and so the world has said, sit down, shut up. You have nothing of value to say. But that's wrong, the Tehillim, the song saying, sing, shout, make a new song to Elohim. Oh yeah, it's the authority. We have not been given permission for the spoken word. Yeah, there's authority in the spoken word. Hey, yeah. Singing in the free world. Yes, we've been given permission. But the spoken word from the kishkas, projecting from the depths and the bowels of who you are, the enemy's got to flee. Oh yeah, but I go back to that scripture. I believe it's James 4, 7. Submit to God. One, resist the devil. Two, and three, he will flee from you. So if you're in fear of the adversary, that's not what God wants you to be. And you're going to go around and around and around, and you won't be formed into the image of Messiah. Because you're ensnared by the adversary, and that's what he wants. So we say, so what? So what? Did you feel? But God, that's the proclamation. But God. And so, whew, in 2011, the Lord spoke a word. He tucked it in my heart. I'll never forget. And it is truly the light box of this ministry, he said, it's really the word that's over the canopy of this ministry. And he said, it's through the new sound, the sound that's never been sung, that's never been done. A dance has never been done or executed. He said, I'm healing my people. Whoa. And he said, we are cha cha. That's what you're doing in the local prayer houses at your dance watch. And I was like, oh God, forgive me, I forgot it was for healing's sake. Right, I thought it was praise and worship, which it is, I ain't you. Ooh, it would have been enough, man. Oh, yeah. Healing is the children's prayer. And so this is what I have witnessed in my workshops and watches. Men into the 90s, women, singles, married couples from all the nations. 2011, he gave me a lot of words. In 2011, I guess I needed it. Yeah, that was his timing. And he said, I want you to do this with married couples. And they'll receive healing and restoration pain. And so literally when he gave me that word at the prayer house, I approached a married couple that was there. And she said, fine with me, her name, her name is Donna, I remember, because that's my birth mom's name. And she said, I just need to ask my husband. He said, okay. And so I led them through some things, some prophetic things, ha ha, ooh, that the Lord shot, shot, wanted me to. And it was glorious, oh yes. So obedience brings blessing. Don't wait until you understand why, how you are to do something or else <laughs> you'll never do it oh no we need to be obedient 
to what God wants us to do. Because it can shift our lives. God gives you one direction. If you're obedient and you do it, it can shift your whole life. I remember it was, um, I think it was my Aliyah anniversary. And the Lord told me to put on my white formal ministry outfit. Go up to the rooftop. And dance the Hatifa, the Hope, Israel National Anthem. And I did it. And you know what? My whole life shifted. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that was going to happen. But that came just from following the Lord. So, the last word God gave you, be sure you did it. Because he's not giving you another one. A new word. And so you followed the last word. Oh, yeah. That's right. It's our responsibility to steward this one-of-a-kind life. Don't compare yourself, Papa. To anyone else? Oh no. That's a waste of time. You can't get time back. Whoosh. Yeah. Be you. That's a full time job. Being you. Being you. Is a full time job. Lift up your voice. Chase the cucarachas out. Oh yeah. That oppression. Get it out. Oppression is not from God. That's right. So when you feel, and if you have a shofar, that's awesome. Oh yeah. If you struggle, with depression, oh my goodness, that'll kick you out. There's an expression, I'm not going to say it, because for some it might be funny, and for others it might not be, so we'll just pass on that. Oh yeah.
and get your breakthrough from Jerusalem with love.